Hi there guys, it's Jakko here. I've been working with this rock model here and I noticed that I've got the issue that at some point anyone who is working with ZBrush is going to get and this is the, the stretched polygon issue and when we work with the model no matter how good base mesh we get and even if we use Dynamesh in the beginning and then we switch into normal polygonal type sculpting uh, we get this this issue and when we look at the polyframe we can see that we have this and there's no way we can fix this uh, without uh, doing what I'm gonna do retopology and projection so um, yes let's fix this so we've got this issue so the way to fix this is that uh, we need to basically make a new uh, base mesh using retopology and we could do this by retopology by hand or we could just use Z remesher it's the fantastic feature of the recent ZBrush. So uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go here. Uh, I'm going to select this one and I'm going to clone it. And so we have now this this one and I'm going to rename this so that uh, we don't get confused. I'm going to go to here. I'm going to go to sub tool and uh, rename. I'm going to rename this uh, a retopo. So now we have the original one and we have the retopo one. So this is the original and this is the retopo. So I'm going to go to retopo and I'm going to go to, to the geometry. And I'm going to uh, maybe lower the subdivision level to one. And then we have Z measure here. The reason why I lowered the subdivision is that it's going to calculate faster. Actually, sometimes it's good to decimate the model so that uh, you can get it calculated faster. If you have a complicated model where you have a lot of details going on, it's better to to do this decimation process so it's going to help the uh, zero measure calculation. Anyway, you don't need those uh, high frequency details for zero measure, so it won't matter. But in my case, we have like a, uh, about 200k polys here, so it's going to be okay. So I'm just, I'm just going to hit this without uh, adjusting the uh, edge settings. I think this, this default setting usually <laughs> works really well. I mean, it's amazing how well Z measure works. It really is intelligent tool and it has just saved so much time even for me like when I've been doing models where I needed to to just uh, have a quick uh, retopology done and basically sometimes the results what this gives us are just perfect results. They, they are they're just good enough results so we can use them in a the final product as well sometimes character models and those tend to be a little bit more trickier they might sometimes we might sometimes need to go and adjust some uh, edge loops around the face and uh, around the eyes or or some animated part where we need we know that there's going to be animation or there's going to be rigging and deformation then those things we sometimes need to do by hand but but this is amazing what it can do it really just works so well so i'm going to speed up this video and uh, i'll see you in the flip side Okay, here we are, uh, zero machine com completed in 88 seconds. And we can see we've got really super nice mesh. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, look at this. It just basically works. There's, I don't see any problems with this mesh. It, I mean, this could be used uh, in a final product. I can't see why not. Anyway, so now we have these and we have the retop and we have the original. So I'm gonna go to original and uh, I'm gonna append this uh, retopo to this. I'm gonna go in here and uh, just a moment, I'm gonna find, so you have to go to subtool, yeah. I'm gonna go and append the retopo to this. Now we have these two guys. So this is about 3.3 uh, million and this is about uh, 8,000 polys. So I'm gonna go and uh, just hit Ctrl D to divide this about so we get about two and you know, about two million is gonna be enough because if we divide it more, it's gonna be it's gonna get too high. So uh, we're gonna be okay with two million. It it won't matter. So I'm gonna go in here and just make sure both both of them are visible. And now we can go sub to and we can call project all. And sometimes we need to adjust the distance and mean and those values. But in in my case, I'm just gonna leave this uh, as default. I'm gonna hit project all. So it's gonna take a while again. It's gonna process this so uh, I'll see you when it's done so okay here we are it's done and we can actually see what we've got so we've got the big something that looks like this and I don't see any problems here when I'm watching it now uh, I don't see any holes 
okay there's a little hole in here so sometimes you get these issues and I don't really exactly understand why this happens but there's an easy fix so you go to geometry in here so we have these close holes here and when we click this it's gonna say that this function cannot be applied to a mesh with multiple subdivision levels so I'm gonna delete the lower subdivision levels because we don't need them anyway I'm gonna go and hit the close holes and it really fixes it and let's see I mean, it's still got a little bit of weirdness so I'm just gonna go and kind of smooth it out so maybe we can use the trim dynamic brush in here just kind of a so you can see that the problem is solved and otherwise we are looking pretty good here so now when we look at the uh, polyframe we can see that we have really nice looking dense dense mesh and we don't have any stretching issues we can just keep working with this so now if we go in here and we start to sculpt we can get rid of these stretching issues here so this is the way how you can keep working with your model if you make some dramatic changes you can always do this without any loss of quality so so projection is going to project the original detail from your mesh just perfectly to your new mesh so it's a great way to work with ZBrush absolutely a killer feature so uh, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to use projection in ZBrush I'll see you soon uh, it's great to see you all new subscribers I hope you enjoy this was Jakko uh, bye bye